And the bottom line is there have been some studies that show that there may be a slight association with different environmental factors and different genetic factors with autism, but no single smoking gun, no single cause. So with that said, the secretary cited a study by Harvard, the dean actually at Harvard, in making that association between acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol, and autism. Tell us about that work. Is it definitive? It's not definitive. So the type of study that was done is called a meta-analysis. Basically, they looked in the literature, read all of the studies that fell within a certain category that they had established ahead of time, and then summarized what the findings were. And they did show a, a mild association with exposure to Tylenol in pregnant women for the kids. The problem is other studies in the past that have been more focused on a single population, when they actually started to unpeel some of the coexisting factors, did not determine that there was a link between Tylenol use and autism. In fact, they actually had what they call case control studies where they looked at SIBs whose mothers took Tylenol when they were pregnant and another SIB who didn't and could not see any difference in the prevalence of autism. And having said that, it's really important for our listeners to know just because there's an association between two facts doesn't mean that one causes the other. And there's a what we call a confounding variable here. Women that are pregnant, the only safe pain medicine that they can take and the only antipyretic or anti-fever drug that they can take is Tylenol. So perhaps fever is the cause and not the medication that people are taking mm. to relieve the symptoms. And we know that fever can cause developmental disorders.